In this video, we're going to talk about the different types of model and part animations you can do within Keyshot. Down at the bottom, I already have my timeline open, which is going to be populated with all the animations that I create. If I go ahead and select the animation wizard, we can talk about the different types of animations that we can do. You can see here that each is going to have a small video preview showing of what the animation actually is. The first option, turntable, can only be applied to an entire model. This is going to be a rotation of whatever your entire model is around a particular point. Translations are going to be movements in a linear direction. Rotations can be a rotation around a part or a piece of reference geometry. And we can also work with fades. These fades can be anywhere from 0 to 100% visibility. Let's go ahead and apply a turntable animation. I'll select turntable, then hit next. It's going to ask me for the model that it would like to actually animate. So I'll go ahead and select my headphones. When I hit next, it's automatically going to give me an animation down on the timeline of 360 degrees with a default value of 5 seconds. The center of rotation by default will be the model, and then the default direction is going to be clockwise, which we can change. If I go ahead and select finish, I can scrub through the timeline and get an idea of that turntable before it actually renders out. I can also hit the play button and get a quick video preview. You can see that this is going to continue rotating because I have the animation set to loop here. The default value is going to be 360 degrees for that rotation. I can also specify counterclockwise for the direction. I'll set that back to clockwise for now though. One thing that I definitely want to mention in here is working with motion easing. Right now, the motion easing is set to linear, which means it's going to be a constant velocity as this part turns around. If I hit this drop down though, I can get a preview of the different types of motion easing that I've got, including easing in, easing out, and a combination of easing in and easing out. I'll go ahead and select this and apply it. You'll see that the movement is going to be a little bit more natural. It has a little bit of acceleration at the beginning, and then deceleration at the end. This is where I can also adjust any of my time values. So if I want to make this take a little bit longer, for example, I can hit the button here or I can type in a value. I'll set this back to that default value of five. If I want to add a translation, this is going to be a linear movement of a part or a model. There are a couple ways that I can do this. First, I can select my animation and then select translation for a part. In this case, I'm going to go through basically a copy of my scene tree and then I can select a part that I actually want to animate. In this case, I'm going to select this ear cup and then hit next. It's going to add an animation onto that timeline down here on the bottom. And if I scrub through, I can get a preview of that animation. The issue that I'm running into here is that since this model was imported using the original units, it's only moving it in a value of one, which is one millimeter. So I'll reset that back down to zero, and let's try a value that's gonna be a little bit more visible. In this case, something like 30 millimeters. I can scrub through the timeline and it's moving, but I can see that it's going in the wrong direction. So I'll type in a value of negative 30. Now you can see that part is gonna be moving in the correct direction. You can also toggle on and off with your animations to make them visible. So now I've got the part moving in the right direction and with the right units. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of motion easing. So it's going to ease in and ease out and I'll make this animation take a little bit longer. And now I can just select the animation and move it to the beginning of my timeline. So now I'll turn both animations on, hit play, and we can see those parts moving. All right, so what about animating these other parts? The second way you can apply animations is instead of working with an animation through the animation wizard, I can just select the part that I actually want to animate. In this case, I've added the animation to the right ear cup. So I'm gonna select the left ear cup and then I can right click, hit animation, and then add a translation. Same thing as before. I want to type in a larger value for my units. In this case, I'm going to 
reverse the orientation. But I now should see those parts moving in the right direction. And I'll also adjust this one. So I'm also working with a little bit of motion easing. So now I've got those parts moving in together. I can also add a rotation to those parts. I'm going to go ahead and select that left ear cup. And then again, instead of going through the animation wizard, I can directly select the part that I want to animate. Hit animation and add a rotation. Now when I scrub through my timeline, you can see that part is rotating. I'll go ahead and turn off the other animations just so they're not distracting me. All right, so now that part is going to be rotating. The default value here is going to be a rotation of 90 degrees. In this case, it's a symmetrical part, so I can type in a value of 180, and that's going to be fine. And I'll go ahead and add in a little bit of motion easing. We also have the ability to add pivot points. So if you want to actually have this part rotate around another part, let's say uh, a movable arm for a desk lamp, then you can pick a rotation point that's not the object itself. In this case, the default value is self, and then it's going to be the center point of the object. So now I have that part rotating. Same thing I'm going to do for the right ear cup, but to save a little bit of time, I can find the animation that I want to copy, and I can copy an animation by right-clicking, selecting Copy Animation, find the part, in this case, the ear cup that I want to apply the copy to, and then I can paste the second animation. So now both ear cups are going to be rotating. And let me turn these other animations back on, hit play, and now we can see all those parts moving within my timeline. I'm going to adjust the spacing a little bit. In this case, if I multi-select by holding down shift, I can adjust them in the timeline. Same thing for these rotations. And if I want to extend both, as long as they're multi-selected, I can adjust those settings for both at the same time. Now I can hit play. Those parts are going to move out and my rotation is going to be completed. Uh, another thing that I can do uh, to help save time when building up these layers of animations is I have these parts moving and rotating out. Uh, instead of manually building them, rotating and moving back in, I can hold down shift, multi-select, and now when I right click, I can create a mirror of those animations. So now if I go back to my first frame, and hit play, you'll see that those parts are going to rotate and then move back in. The last type of animation for parts and models that I'm going to add to this scene here is working with a fade. In this case, let's say I want to fade this animation in and then fade it back out. What I can do is go to my animation wizard, select fade, and then I'm going to have the whole model fade in and then fade out. So I'm going to select the headphones, hit next, and I'm going to fade this from 0% to 100%. And let's have that ease in. And then we'll have that last for just about a second. And then hit finish. Now when I scrub through my timeline, you'll see that animation fade in. And just like I did before, I can right click this animation, go ahead and mirror it, and then add it to the end of my timeline so that it's going to fade out. I'll turn off the loop, go back to the first frame, hit play, and now I can see a preview of my part and model animations here. You can find more tutorials at keyshot.com learning.